The invention of the automobile is a huge success story. Since the year 1900, the number of produced cars has been continuously growing. Already in 1950, 10 million cars were produced. Nowadays, the production of automobiles exceeded 80 million cars per year. Predictions say that it is only a matter of time that the number of produced cars in a year surpasses 100 million cars. Knowing those numbers, it is no surprise that out the automobile industry is one of the largest industries globally and the automotive industry is an important economic sector in many countries like the US, Japan, Germany and South Korea. The automobile is one of the few mass products which significantly changed the everyday life because it enabled individual mobility on a scale which was not possible before. On the contrary, the environmental impact of the automobiles is also huge. The transportation sector accounts for 18% of all man-made carbon dioxide emissions. Cars also release particulate matter through burning diesel, through brakes, through tires. Particulate matter is assumed to reduce the average life expectancy by several months. Automobiles take a lot of room in the public space. The sidelines of public streets being occupied by parking cars can be observed in many urban areas. From 1950 onwards, for 30 years, most of the cars were produced in the US with the US Big Three, General Motors, Ford, Chrysler becoming the largest automobile brands during that time. This only changed in 1980, when Japan took over producing most of the cars globally. Many well-known automobile brands were founded in Japan, like Toyota, Daihatsu, Honda, Suzuki, Subaru, Nissan, Mazda or Mitsubishi. On the third place came Germany, with also well-known brands Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche, BMW and Mercedes. Times are changing and just recently China took over the lead with most cars being produced. Chinese automobile brands comprise the names of BYD, Geely and GWM. Until today, the traditional so-called internal combustion engine cars, abbreviated as ICE, are predominant on the markets. However, the automobile industry is now entering a phase of major changes. Just in recent years, we have observed the start of the advent of battery electric vehicles, also abbreviated as BEV. The rise of battery electric vehicles leads to what I would call the start of a disruption of the traditional way of developing and manufacturing cars. It cannot be denied that there are at least a few indicators for this disruption happening. New brands emerged globally and grew quickly, which have not been present on the market before, like Tesla and BYD. Also, the customers put new products features to the foreground, such as range, entertainment, connectivity and autonomous driving. Other traditional product features like engine efficiency, engine power, sound and feel of a combustion engine are not relevant for battery electric vehicles anymore. The electric drivetrain technology is not as complex as the internal combustion engine, reducing market barriers for new entrants to the automotive industry. The electric drivetrain has an high efficiency and does not need components such as a clutch, a catalytic converter, an alternator, different kinds of filters or spark plugs. A car with less components usually also has lower running costs due to less maintenance needed. Some experts estimate that due to the exponential growth of battery electric cars already in 2026, a tipping point from ICEs to BEVs is reached. Some established brands already invested in technology for electric vehicles many years ago, like Toyota, selling the worldwide first mass-produced hybrid drivetrain already in 1997. On the contrary, other brands did not keep pace with recent developments in electrical vehicles and kept the previous way of designing cars longer than others. As one example, Volkswagen, which is the second largest automobile manufacturer globally, did not offer competitive 
electric cars as quickly as their new competitors BYD and Tesla. Volkswagen introduced their first purely electric vehicle, the ID3, in 2019. Some governments pushed the demand of battery electric vehicles massively. Subsidies and tax exemptions for electric cars have been introduced. As a recent example, the German government granted the highest bonus in the European Unit of Union of up to 9,000 euros for the purchase of a new electric car. However, the subsidies were abruptly terminated in December 2023 without upfront notification by the government. Immediately after the termination of the subsidies, the demand in the German market for electric cars plummeted by almost 60% already one month later in January 2024. But this is not the end of the story. The current market development is still dynamic. It seems that there was a high end in price on the market. Without the subsidies, the economic mechanisms of a free market came through. The demand has dropped on the one hand, but also on the other hand, manufacturers probably expected further subsidies and built a lot of new production capacity meanwhile. Hence, the market of electric cars suddenly experiences an excess supply. Demand and supply are not balanced anymore. Now, manufacturers trying to sell their cars in the market reduce prices massively, which some experts already call a price war among automobile manufacturers. For sure, this is beneficial for buyers as they pay lower prices now. At the same time, this also impacts current electric car owners as also the prices on the secondary market for used electric cars dropped. Owners are not able to sell their used cars for a price as planned initially. With a non-stable secondary market, consumers even more stay away from buying electric cars and demand is furtherly decreasing. It seems that the subsidies in combination with the sudden termination and imbalance of supply and demand causes a vicious cycle. I believe such high subsidies must be managed very carefully by governments because it can lead to inefficient markets. Once subsidies are terminated, it can cause impacts such as the observed vicious cycle on the example of electric cars. Probably it would have made more sense for the government to dedicate the funding at least partially into recharging infrastructure instead of direct subsidies. Is it not the primary task of a government to take care a working infrastructure rather than driving markets to inefficiency? For sure, developing a functioning infrastructure is more complex and more difficult than paying subsidies. I leave it to you to judge on this dilemma. In our Capitalism Lab session today, we'll launch a new corporation as an automobile manufacturer. Just as in the real world, and our automobile manufacturer relies on suppliers and contractors. Therefore, to supply our cooperation with the necessary raw materials and input goods, we will also set up a subsidiary acting as our supplier. For instance, a lot of steel will be needed for manufacturing a car, which will be produced and provided by our subsidiary. Capitalism Lab simulates our real-life economy. Starting your own corporation, you can apply and try out business strategies, which you can see with well-known companies in real life. Capitalism Lab does not know the advent of electric cars yet. Hence, in this session, we will purely manufacture internal combustion engine automobiles. Now, let's start the game. This is the main menu of the game. We will start a new game. It will be a custom game. Our corporation color and logo will be yellow, so it is easy to spot on the map. Our environment comprises four cities. 
we need a lot of initial capital to set up our automobile manufacturer. Therefore, our startup capital, capital is very high. And we also said that we want to have one subsidiary acting as a supplier for raw materials and CB products to us. That's why we have one subsidiary. We start in the game of 1990. We will allow retail stores with multiple floors, which is enabled by the subsidiary DLC of Capitalism Lab. We will have 16 competitors with moderate level of capital and expertise. For seaports, we will allow one seaport per city for consumer goods and up to four seaports for importing industrial goods per city. We will need those goods to supply all of the raw materials because at the beginning we will not be able to import to produce everything by ourselves due to a lot of capital investment is needed. However, the import quality will be low. We will now start the game. First, before we start setting up our company or subsidiary, let's have a look on the environment. What we see here on the world map, we have the as set and configured four cities, Copenhagen, Cairo, Warsaw and Brussels. Despite Cairo and Warsaw, Copenhagen and Brussels have a higher real weight rate. Cairo and Warsaw rather on the lower end of the scale. Cairo is the biggest city, which will probably be a large market later on for us. And um, the cities of Copenhagen and Brussels will have high costs in terms of wages, for example. Before we set up our first mines and factories on the map, we will first of all have a look at, and at our corporate strategies and set up the strategies accordingly so that everything works together as expected. First of all, what I always do is to set the brand strategy. And I think again, the range brand is a viable setting. It is a balance of having synergies of one brand for multiple products at once. However, we will not mix all of different kinds of products within one brand, which is difficult for a customer to perceive. And we'll do so for our subsidiary, for our corporation, the player corporation, as well as Revolver, our subsidiary. And also, as our subsidiary will, for the main time of the game, act on its own behalf, we need to set up instructions how the subsidiary should work. Otherwise, it will invest quickly into. assets, which is not our intention when it should act as our supplier for raw materials for our auto automobile corporation. So therefore, to achieve this, we will first of all have a look at the CEO who is managing currently our company. We will therefore set up a headquarter for the subsidiary. However, um, before we set it up randomly in some one city, we will see which city will be the one where most of the factories, mines and so on will be set up. And as, let's have a look, as cars have, this is the manufacturer's guide on cars, need a lot of steel. Here, 1000 pieces of steel compared to 100 of plastic and 50 of glass for a car body. Also, the engine is made up of 500 pieces of steel and even the wheel and tires are made of 60 pieces of steel. So steel is something which will really be in all of our semi products and in our end product, the car. And therefore our supplier must definitely supply steel to us for steel. We need coal and iron ore. 
since both is heavy weight and transporting coal and iron ore is very expensive, we will try to find a location for our steel factory and the mines so that they are close by in one city and we will not transport either of those products around the world. As to be reminded, not all of the cities are close by. Actually, we are in this scenario a little bit lucky. Yeah, by chance, all those cities are not so far away. So transportation costs will not be as high as it would be if we, for example, would transport something from North America to Europe or from Europe to Australia. Let's first of all check the mines. So here in Copenhagen, we have iron ore quality 65 and coal quality 53. This is medium good. Since steel is in all of our semi-products, it will have a significant impact on the total overall quality of the car. So therefore we want to look for a good starting point before we simply set up our mines. Here in Cairo, we have an air quality iron of 73. And I don't see coal on the map, so Cairo is probably not the point to start with. We have coal of 78 in Warsaw and iron ore of 88. This is already good. Maybe Warsaw will be the city. And let's check Brussels. Brussels, we have iron ore of 57 and coal of 87. 87 is good, but 57 is lower since the, uh, oh, let's see. This is 87 and we have another site here, by the way. 82, also high. But since iron ore is not so high and the average value of both half half will count, we will go to Warsaw. Just be reminded transportation of such heavy weight goods is very important. An advantage of Copenhagen would be that we could place the steel factory very close to both of the mines. Just keep this in mind. This could also be a good argument to place it here in the city of Copenhagen, but we will go for the quality. And therefore, we will put it in Warsaw, 78 and 88. We said before we set up the mines, we will first set up the governance for our new subsidiary. So it acts in, as we intend. As according to our intentions. So therefore, we will, with the initial capital, buy a headquarter for this subsidiary. One thing you cannot avoid before setting up the strategy and the guidance for the CEO and the management team of your subsidiary, your subsidiary will always already at the very beginning of the start of the game, before you can even stop the game, set up a commercial building and an R&D center. And therefore, some of the initial capital will be already some kind of wasted. So for example, CEO decided to invest in R&D for a sofa and build a commercial building in Brussels. However, we will simply ignore this and the new policies we will set up for the CEO will not allow such investments anymore. We will set up the headquarter here. We will add all of the departments which can be added. Our current CEO is Jenna Owen. Jenna has expertise in R&D, furniture, expand sofa, and manufacturing a little bit, but raw material production not enough. So therefore we will look for a new CEO which has higher expertise in raw materials. What are the examples within higher expertise of a CEO, COO, CTO in certain specific areas? You will gain an initial advantage when starting R&D as a CTO or mines as a CEO and COO. So that's why we will click on hire new. We look for someone with high expertise in raw materials and probably manufacturing. I 
I think Madison Cooper is good. We'll need to terminate the employment of the current CEO. Since the CEO doesn't, did not receive a monthly salary, we don't need to pay something as compensation. We will ask as being a supplier for us, it's raw materials to do the maximum of backward integration. We will not allow to expand in media and expand in real estate. Those are assets which are highly capital intensive, will consume a lot of money of the subsidiary, and we don't want to invest and transfer money from our corporation into the subsidiary just to fund such highly expensive assets. That's why we deactivated here. For the scope of production, we don't want a competitor within our own corporation. So therefore we will deactivate O2 Mobile. Now it's shown in red. What else? The CEO and CEO and so on decides, they can decide on their own. You will not allow the new CEO to issue new shares. Yeah, new shares can dilute the ownership and uh, new shares are actually expensive for the parent company. So that's this is something which we'll manage by ourselves, such big financial transactions. And also to help a little bit the company who will also employ in COO and CMO and CTO. Let's take a COO with high manufacturing expertise. We have a little bit more choice of management policies. Again, we leave it as it was just set. We'll also hire a CMO to manage advertisement. The target brand rating is not so important for a supplier. Therefore, we'll leave it like this. And to boost R&D, we will, of course, also hire a CTO. And now we have a fully set up management team for our subsidiary. We will also have a look at the financial transactions a subsidiary can, may do. This is in the financial actions tab for our subsidiary. We will, for the dividend, not let the CEO decide, let me decide as the owner of the full corporation. And we will um, ask our subsidiary to pay a new dividend payout ratio of 40%. And I think for having set this up, we are good to go to now finally set up mines and a steel factory. One mine on iron ore with quality 88. And what you see here, due to the expertise brought in by the different roles of the management team, we have already at the beginning an, um, an rating of the units, experience level of the units of six for mining and six for sales, which is good because this way they are already very efficient. And as we do this usually, we will always connect this to a warehouse. We could think of, yes, I think we will do this. 
we'll use one warehouse for both coal and steel and iron ore. Yeah, steel will not do, but for coal and iron ore it should be okay. Yeah, let's first of all mine the material so it is available. Here it is, iron ore. We we'll allow a little bit more margarine. Also, coal is already available. A little bit more margarine. How it arrives in the warehouse and also the warehouse. We will allow a little bit of margin and now with those two natural resources we can already produce steel. We will therefore set up a factory just close to the warehouse. Steel is made of two ingredients. In this case, I usually stick to this layout. Coal and iron ore and the factory start operations. Steel is available. We will again, of course, set up a warehouse. This will help us later on. We need a lot of steel. And when the factory does not have enough capacity to supply our later on in the supply chain, the other manufacturing factories, then um, we will can set up a second factory and also connect it to the warehouse. And the warehouse will distribute to all the different factories. And whenever we are in need of more capacity, we'll add it. We will put this into the warehouse and the warehouse will continue to distribute everything to all of the receiving companies. Additionally, the warehouse can act as a buffer yeah, when there are peaks in demand of a certain semi-product or product, as well as when there is a lower demand, production will simply continue for a while and the storage will be Bit. Steel is available in the warehouse now. There it is. Let's have a look in the manufacturer's guide into the car. The car consists of a car body, an engine, and wheel and tire. This is very close to the technology of a car, so we will leave this to the automobile corporation itself, the parent company, to produce such um, such semi products. However, the very generic input materials we will all provide through our supplier, the subsidiary. And this is besides steel, plastic, and glass for the car body. For plastic and glass, setting up the manufacturing, the mines, this will cost a lot of money. And um, since the initial capital, we will not consume it for all of the mines and not take loans and so on. We will first of all for glass and plastic, as it's only a low share, we'll buy it from seaports and then um, use it for manufacturing the car body. However, still we are give the task to connect to the seaports to the subsidiary. By the way, here's a seaport also providing a car body. We will produce it in our corporation by ourselves. Yeah, it seems like it was so 
we are not receiving any of those. Let's check Brussels. No, not really. Copenhagen, maybe. Rubber, we find in Copenhagen. Rubber, we can produce in a farm, so probably we will not import to a seaport. It's not so expensive to set up a farm. Copenhagen will also not be the city providing us. Here we found glass in Cairo. And plastic in Cairo. Great. As we need, let's check a little bit more plastic than glass. We will set up a warehouse here. And get glass as well as plastic. Where is it? Here. From the seaport to our warehouse. Here it is. This is a little bit too high margin, I think. And from this warehouse, the supplier will provide the goods to us. So now let's back, get back to the manufacturer's guide. So a car body can be already produced by the supplied semi-products. An engine also was only in need of steel and wheels and tire, not yet. Rubber is needed. Rubber first will be provided by a seaport. I think this was not in Cairo. No. And then was also not Warsaw, I think it was Copenhagen, all right. And then later on, we will produce it in our own um, our own farm. Since a farm needs time to produce rubber, so first they, the, everything needs to be planted and then it must be harvested and then it can be distributed. We will set up here for rubber. First of all, warehouse. next to the seaport. Like this. And just because we want to avoid setting up too many warehouses, we will also right here, later on switch in this warehouse to take not from the seaport, but instead from the nearby farm rubber. Therefore we set up the farm just here. Everything needs to be connected in a meaningful manner. Yeah, this makes sense. And this crop we will choose the rubber plant. And what we see now, waiting for sowing season, sowing in May, we have January now, will take roughly a year until rubber from our own farm will be available. So far so good, we will first of all import it. Let's set the price for rubber. Like this. And now get back to where our production lines will be set up in Wasso. So all of the raw materials, semi-products needed for car production are set up. And we will now switch to the main corporation, to the parent corporation. Let's just simply check the 
subsidiary has $72 million left. It's not a lot, but should be enough buffer so that it does not run out of cash really quickly. Also for our parent company, of course, we will set up headquarter. at all of the departments. So whenever later in the game we want to, we can make use of the functions. We will, this is what I do in most of my games, sessions we will just right from the start employ in CMO because I'm not so interested in the micromanagement of advertisement budgets. Therefore, um, I always make use of and CMO with a very high rating. We will need to have a very strong brand. Only with a strong brand, we will keep our competitors from us away and have a good overall product rating, especially in the beginning when the quality of our product is not so high, we need to compensate this with a strong brand rating and this needs immediate investment into advertising. And this reminds me of something I want to do before to continue. I also want the supplier to improve the quality of steel. Why? Because in all of the semi products, we need steel. So steel has an impact on the overall quality of the car in the end. Therefore, it makes from my perspective sense that also steel production technology is improved over time. Also here we see experience level six due to our CTO. Having high experience in R&D. So let's now switch back to our player corporation. And here we will now start to set up the production lines. So first of all, turning back to the manufacturing line, manufacturer's guide, we see first of all car body, we need steel, plastic, glass. This means factory, we will put it here next to Here. Since most we need steel, we will link Those two purchasing units to steel, this one to glass, and this one to plastic. Well, let's start with the production. Here it is. We will allow a smaller margin within internal sale, by the way, default on internal sale. and distribute this first of all as always to a warehouse later on we will have more car body factories i'm sure the demand will be very high therefore the warehouse will help us to organize our supply chain Like this. Let's turn again back to the manufacturer's guide. Car body, next thing, engine. Also relying on steel. Again, we will set up a factory. Maybe here. Let's think of a good layout.
We will use steel. Our subsidy. And with the steel, produce an engine. Takes a while, here it is. We will reduce the margin because we want the full margin of the car having very close to our selling point so that we have the flexibility to react to the competition and the overall product rating. And again, of course, we'll set up a warehouse. It serves as a buffer as well as later on helps us organizing. the supply chains when multiple factories need to be set up to supply the demand. Like this. Already those semi products have a significant impact on the overall product quality. The production technology of a car is only determined by 30% by the car, 70% come from the semi products. So it makes sense to invest into R&D also in those semi products, which is car body, engine and wheel and tire. So we will set up R&D centers accordingly. Car body, one here. Wheel and tires. And Engine. Like this, wheel and tires, factory is missing so far. Wheel and tire needs rubber and steel again, so we will not set it far away. Let's put it here. We will link to warehouses from our supplier, our own subsidiary. This is first of all steel. And secondly, rubber. This for now comes from a seaport, but later on. I hope that the management team will do this by, on its own, but we will check later. If they really do it, we will switch to what comes out of the farm, of course. What is the example? The farm, by gaining knowledge and experience over the years, will increase in the quality of rubber and therefore produce higher quality rubber than the seaport will import. Where we set seaport quality as low, this should be soon better coming from our own farm. takes a while. What is the reason? Steel is not coming to our factory already. Now we see high demand for steel. What's the issue? Let's quickly check. Iron ore. We need more iron ore. So I always advise before investing into a new factory to first check whether the bottleneck comes from somewhere else. For example, if the mine is not supplying enough iron ore, then sometimes it just helps to simply set up more mining units. So here it does not seem to be an issue.
mitigate that this will get a bottleneck pretty soon. We'll also increase capacity for mining here. Let's see if this fixes already a little bit. Sure. Yeah, supply bars, the yellow bar is increasing slowly. So therefore should work. Now steel. Let's see. Hopefully it arrived now here. Yeah. Wheel and tire is available. Again, we will build up a warehouse for wheel and tire. We can expect and assume that soon we will need to increase also here the production. The pro production capacity as um, each car needs obviously four wheels. Not really a surprise. One engine, one car body, but four wheels. And therefore this will soon get, get one of our bottlenecks. So now we have all of the three semi products needed set up and now comes the car. Also the car, of course, 30% production technology, quality of the product comes from production technologies for cars. So of course we will again set up a research and development center for a car like this. Great. And from there we will now set up production for car. We need space because there will soon be many factories coming up and in need. When demand ramps up, distributing our cars to the city of Warsaw, but later on also to all other cities to reach the markets of all cities. As we need four wheels per car, obviously, we will set up two times purchasing wheel and tires, one time engine, one time car body. And now the price, a car comes out of the factory. We will again, and this will get a complex handling very, very quickly. We will again distribute it first of all to a warehouse and from the warehouse to our selling points, which will be automobile stores. We will again lower significantly the margin at this stage because we want the flexibility in the local markets to set an attractive price to the end, penetrate the market against local competitors and maybe even any other competitor who also with the help of imported car body tires, wheels, as well as engines from seaports overseas set up in an easy way automobile production let's see so now we have cars available and we can sell them cars are very very heavy product not as for example a smartphone or a drug or food yeah it is difficult to handle and needs more trans higher complex transportation. Therefore, transport costs will be very high for cars per piece. And also units like output and input units cannot manage so many cars at once. Therefore, we will soon see more input units, more output units to handle all of the cars. We need multiple stores to handle the demand because also someone selling a car 
cannot sell the same way as smartphones or drugs or food. Cars, yeah, cars will be sold rather one by one. This we will see in the game, but for now we will start small. We have one factory, one warehouse per product. And now in the city of Warsaw, start setting up our first store to sell finally cars to our end consumers. Let's have a click, quick view on the market size. So for Warsaw, it is 5 million. This is a very small market actually. Much smaller than for Brussels, it's 22 million. For Cairo, 23 million. Though having two to three times higher population due to the lower price of only 12K compared to Brussels, 18K. Still, it's the same market size. For Copenhagen, it's also good, but for also very low price and low inhabitants, not very attractive market. But still, since this is here our hometown in this case, we will of course set up a retail store, an automobile outlet. Automobiles can only be sold in automobile outlets. Let's find a good place. High customer traffic, 51 is very high, 24, why not take this one? We will, as said, for cars, since cars cannot be sold in bulk, many at once, we will set up multiple purchasing and sales units at once. There it is. First car arrived in our automobile outlet. Our overall rating is lower than the city overall from local distributors. This is due to lower brand rating, zero compared to 19. Quality is good, which is great. But we first of all, to enter the market, we need to compensate a little bit. The missing brand rating, let's see if this already works. Yeah, now the demand slowly increases. Still waiting for the first cars to be sold. Yeah, this works now. Our CMO will now set up advertisements. Soon will brand rating will increase and then the demand should grow quickly. Yeah, there it is. Since we have a lot of initial capital still left and we have other cities which are much higher market volume, we will of course also establish the automobile outlets in other cities. Let's first check if our other company is doing fine. They set up a retail store. Oh, they are selling probably from, yeah, from seaports, they are selling products in a retail store, which is fine in Warsaw. Okay. Let's check. Brussels is very attractive, very high price, high market volume. Let's go there. Here we are. Set up an automobile outlet. 30, 24, 21, 18, 18. Ah, we did a small error. We need to transfer the firm to our parent company. Set it up under the wrong brand, no issues. Therefore, we have this transfer firm function. There it is. And now we see again, quality is good, it's higher, but brand rating we need to compensate. 
with a very low price. Setting such of a low price to achieve a good overall rating is called penetration pricing. Penetration pricing has a pure intention to penetrate the market, to gain market share. And then after a while, when market share is there, the brand rating improved, the quality improved, the overall rating could be improved not only by setting a low price, the price will be in small steps iteratively be increased to generate higher margins and to actually have a profitable business model. What we see already now in this February, we see already a little bit of a profit for our subsidiary. This is due to the parent company buying all of the raw materials. For our parent company, this is surely not the case as cars just started to be produced. We have a long supply chain being built up, a lot of assets being invested in with running costs and all of this must pay out with selling our cars now in our stores. So let's wait until the first cars get sold. There it is. And now we will of course also enter the other markets. Rust for so done. Cairo. Let's first go to Copenhagen, also an attractive price. Thirty three, twenty four, thirty, forty two. Yeah, it's good. Again, transfer firm first. Now we can set everything up. There is our car trade cost only 500, which is a lower amount than usually can be expected when the distances between the cities is larger. But as all of our cities in this scenario are very close by, we're not losing so much of our margin due to freight costs, which is, I would say, lucky in this scenario. Also here, of course, we will compensate for the low brand rating with a low price. Here it is, car is already sold. And then we will also go to Cairo. Cairo will be interesting. Let's see if it's profitable at all in the beginning to sell cars here. Not sure actually. to find a good 21, 39, 30. Choose this one. Now we bought the store with the right company. Ah, just arrived. Let's see how much we must lower the price to compensate for the city oil rating, which is not too bad actually. This hurts our margin a lot. We need to sell our car below 10K. Very cheap car actually. But soon with high advertisement budget, we will have a better brand rating. And then with a better brand rating, a better overall rating, and we can slowly increase the price to not have this as only good product feature. So now, Let's check, car is sold, slowly sales are ramping up. Let's check our supply chain, seems to be fine for now. Wheel and tire, we see already here that this will soon yeah, get an issue. We will now advance the simulation a little bit. and observe the situation. Okay, seems to be fine. 
again, check. Yeah, so now our one car factory runs with full capacity. This can also be checked here in this overview. We see here the capacity 92, 93%. This looks good. First month is over with having stores in place. And let's already check what the situation is. Rent rating slowly increasing already in Warsaw. Not enough to increase price already now. The supply chain still seems to be fine for now. Let's simply advance with the simulation. What we see already now, the red bars get lower and lower. So soon we will hopefully make profits and not have higher costs than Now, mid of April, we will check again. Now we see already demand, the red bar is exceeding the yellow bar, the supply a lot. So the demand is increasing significantly in the cities. This is what we expected in Warsaw, it's balanced, I would say. But in other cities, we see already here that sales units are almost running with full capacity. So in Brussels, it would make sense to add another floor and more sales units as those sales units cannot satisfy the demand anymore. Let's check in other cities. Also here we see sales units reaching the end of the scale, the brown bar here. Cairo doing fine, but not receiving a lot, enough cars from our production. This means for us that we need to quickly enhance our capacity. And when we have such often higher demand in our stores, then supply from our production lines, then we will first start to enhance with the one, one step in the supply chain afterwards. And this is in this case, the car manufacturing. And there's a very good tool. We can simply duplicate this firm set it next to it, it will exactly function as the other firm. We will link to the warehouse and simply have double capacity now. We need, especially in the case of cars, we need to have a look and always also the capacity of the output and input units because cars are bulky wear. And already now I see here that distributing the cars to all of these stores seems to not work so well now. Let's end the month. So that's why we have a second output unit already. First of May, let's check whether it makes sense already to increase the price. Brand rating is now five in Warsaw, maybe a little bit like this. Brussels. This is actually a new feature of the very last version of Capitalism Lab that you see here when you change the pricing, the price for selling the good, you see here in brackets the change of the overall rating, now it's 40. Now 39. So in previous version, you had to try it out and see what works. And now you have already the product overall rating after the price change. Now I changed it and this is working. Why is it so important for our company to increase prices if possible? Because our company is still not profitable. You see that we have higher costs then revenue.
Interestingly, in the city of Cairo, I don't understand this, where we have the lowest price in all of the four cities, we see here this tiny line, green line in the market pie chart. And this means a competitor started to also sell cars here, motorcycle and cars, by the way, produced by Enlin Incorporated themselves. Interesting. So we have a competitor in the city of Cairo. For now, let's see. Yeah, sales going up. What is the strategy? Also low price and investing a lot into the brand, obviously. For motorcycles, no competitor. For cars, we are the competitor. So now again, this is very crucial in building up an automobile corporation and capitalism lab. We need to check whether supply and demand is in balance. Otherwise we will have shortages, which will quickly ramp down revenue and lead to huge, huge losses due to all of the high running costs and still not selling enough. It seems to be fine for now. Still, we can add another factory and we see like now the yellow bar is increasing and actually getting to the top of this demand bar and therefore the supply is now fine that it seems to be in balance and we also see this is step we now reached the profitable area of our corporation already in may which is good let's close the month of may Let's quickly check how our subsidiary is doing. It's having losses now. I guess the management team decided to invest into more retails or something else. Now, yeah, probably we are not asking for so much steel at the moment. I think seeing this will get soon a bottle be a bottleneck. So we will duplicate the steel factory. We have enough coal and iron ore. If steel is the bottleneck, this will impact all of our semi product at the full supply chain. So we really need to have a close eye on it. And it seems that this already solved the problem. Engine is not an issue. Car bodies still okay. Wheel and tire seems to not be working. So also here we need as expected to duplicate our production capacity. satisfy the demand of the car factories we have now. Yeah, this seems to work now. Partially. 
Yeah, it should be fine. All of them are now, yeah, and we are storing more cars. Then we are actually distributing to our stores. So now, next step, and this is something which will iteratively go now on in this session. Let's check in our stores. What is the situation? What we see here is that we still have a significant, by the way, the competitor also established an automobile outlet in Warsaw, however, not gaining a lot of market share. What we see here is that we still have a lot of market share open and left to the local distributors and local stores. And therefore we have room also to sell more cars. What is the issue? Why are we not selling more than cars? It's because our sales units are already at full capacity. See here in the brown bars that they are selling as many cars as they can, though our purchasing units still have some room to distribute more to them. And therefore, we will now decide to establish a second floor. And from the second floor, sell more cars. Quickly, we will see how sales can be increasing. Again, of course, we will do this now with the other cities. We will check the situation and then also do there. However, we must be cautious if we have more demand from the stores. Again, our factories need to be checked whether they can supply the demand. And it's not only that we need enough production capacity, as we said, we also need enough output units, enough capacity in output units. It seems to be fine for now. Therefore, we will simply start and establish more floors. By the way, hi, Wandering Bishop, welcome to our session. This works also for the city of Brussels. We have some room to increase our price. In Copenhagen, we have a similar situation. Also here we have room to increase our price. And now going to Cairo. In Cairo, exactly the same situation. Now for Cairo, we will do something different. We will anticipate that soon we will have very high demand and had much pressure on this one warehouse, handling the inputs and outputs from those three factories. And we will try out now to relieve this one bottleneck of one warehouse now by um, setting up a second warehouse, doing the same as the first warehouse, getting cars from factories. Another warehouse, input, storage as a buffer and output. Yes, it's a very nice game. It's also very complex and game within high bandwidth. So you can do and try out a lot of things, especially with DLCs. We have here now um, the subsidiary DLC. So we have a subsidiary and um, a parent company, the subsidiary. Um, is providing raw materials and semi products which we need for our automobile corporation. And um, now oh, this was wrong. By the way, we need to transfer to this company. 
Um, yeah, we will in this session build the automobile corporation, but of course you can also build software companies, you can build internet companies, media empires, uh, retail empires, so many different business strategies to be tried out. There's our car. We will again reduce the margin here in the warehouse because we want to have the margin available in our stores to react to any competitors or any other situation and not making losses in our selling points. We can now turn back to Cairo, add another floor. and link this floor now to the second warehouse. And sell the cars from there. Let's close the month of August. And then check our supply chain if there are any new bottlenecks now with more car factories being set up. seems that we have an issue with car body. Yeah. All of our car factories run low on car bodies. So we need to increase capacity here. Only one factory. This is for sure. This is not enough. We will come back later and check whether this solves already the bottleneck at this stage. And again, let's check for pricing. Now we are finally able to increase a little bit the price here in Warsaw. Brussel also a little bit. We are still struggling to be profitable, therefore we should still increase prices if possible. But not as much that customers will stop by our product. Of course. Yeah, that's fine. Let's now finish the month of September and then check again. The we have enough car bodies now. Yeah, it seems to be fine now. Also, this is all fine. How are doing our new floors and our stores? We will now iteratively check if this works. After a while, this gets easier because uh, we set R&D to one year. After one year, there will be a significantly step forward in the product quality and the overall rating will increase and improve. And therefore, you will be a little bit more ahead of the competition. 
it's therefore now closed the month of October. Done. We remember that we set up a rubber farm. This is still in growing season. Only in February rubber will be harvested, so nothing we can do for now. And we will still use rubber imported from our seaport. Not sure if our car body topic is solved. Therefore, I will, to be on the safe side, add another third of production capacity. This works better now. What about wheel and tire? It's okay. Entrance, fine. Steel, no issue. Great, we simply can go on. Now we see that the green bar showing up, very small one, so it seems like we went through it. Let's check our income statement. What we see here is that we have already a kind of high operating revenue of 44 million. However, we have um, also operating expenses, which are of a similar value, so therefore we are by the way, I did an error. Error for our parent companies this is fine actually, but for our subsidiary it looks not as good. Let's investigate. So for us, as you see here in the statement, all fine. We are earning money a lot of capital left, so we can look into other business opportunities soon. For our subsidiary, this is not the case. The farm is generating losses and R&D centers, of course. Commercial building. Let's check the commercial building. Yeah, it's improving, so maybe soon this will solve itself. Okay, great. So in the city of Brussels, we can still sell more, we can increase the price a little bit. So why not add another floor? sell more cars. As already seen in other stores, the sales units all are at almost maximum utilization of the capacity. So we need more sales units to supply the demand. Let's check for the other cities. So here, this looks the same. Cairo, huge market, why? Because of the population. Of course, similar situation.
we now connected some of these stores with um, our new warehouse. And this is actually not providing enough cars. Therefore, we will again duplicate the factory. Link it to the warehouse. It's feeding in. What we also see is the output unit is already fully utilized. Need to add another one. And now finally, R&D projects are completed for engine, for car body, and for wheel and tire. This is great. So this is impacting already, as we see in the manufacturer's guide, 70% of our car overall product quality because it's coming from car body, engine, and wheel and tire. So we improved this just now. I think soon the research project for a car is also coming to an end. And then we should have then we should have a significant increase in our overall product rating. That is we'll just simply complete continue with R and D. And now let's close the month of January and check first of all if this is working oh, better now. Check whether our price is still justified. We can go a little bit higher also. Can also Go higher in Brussels, in Copenhagen, now exceeding 20k, and maybe a little bit also in Cairo. Still have issues to supply supply the demand in cars. Let's, let's observe the situation. Yeah, this seems to work now. Okay, we leave it like this for the moment. And now we have the month of February. We remember that this is the harvest month of uh, rubber. And instead of importing rubber from a seaport, we will now link to our own rubber. this and now the rubber which is harvested in our farm will be stored here In the warehouse 
and used for our own wheels and tires. We have enough wheels and tires. Car body seems to be okay. Steel storage is full, engine storage is full. So far, situation gets better. Let's add also another floor in Warsaw. Yeah, this seems to be fine for now. So what are our options now for the next steps in our cooperation? Of course, since we have the ranged brand strategy, we could easily use synergies and also enter the business of motorcycles because we have everything we need to produce motorcycles and also sell them in the same cities under the same brand. We just need to check whether our competitor did not already occupy all of the market share in our cities. This is not the case, so still a lot of potential left. Um, of course, for a motorcycle, since the price is less than for an automobile, the market is not as has the same does not have the same size as an automobile, but um, still some opportunities to extend our profits and revenue. So we'll set up probably here. Our first factory to produce motorcycles for motorcycles we need of course only two units of wheel and tire still one engine also clear and a little bit of steel therefore we will do it in this way engine and here steel no. steel from our subsidiary We'll again decrease the margin. We already see that we have a brand rating for this product due to the range brand strategy and the synergies we have here. Of course, we want to improve also the production technology of this. Product, here it is, we will do one year. Establish a warehouse just here. Gather, store, and distribute. The motorcycle. That is. We'll again reduce the margin. We want to keep it in our selling point. And now, since our stores already fully occupied with three floors selling cars. We will set up another automobile outlet in the cities.
time cell motorcycles. Because we will need this layout once more, we will add it to our library. Let's set a good price point as we have already a very high brand rating. Doesn't matter that our quality is not as high as for automobiles. However, still the world rating is so high that we can easily increase price already now and still hopefully gain market share against our competitor. Yeah, demand increases now. And what we see here is due to the market share, we have an issue here. We need to stop. Your subsidiary revolver has run out of cash. Yeah, this is now an interesting situation. Um, our subsidiary run out of cash, more losses than profits. So the demand from our own company and what the management team set up by itself, the AI basically did not work out so well. So we will need to help them now. And what we will do is by issuing new shares, we will transfer money from the parent company, our player corporation into Revolver, our subsidiary. We will set an issuing price of the new shares of our subsidiary with a premium of 20%. We will issue share so many shares that twenty million of funding is raised, which will be paid, of course, by the player corporation. We'll see this here in our own cash. Here we have three hundred forty-three million, almost three hundred forty-four million. We'll issue now new shares and um, see that this money got transferred now through the new shares into our subsidiary and our subsidiary would be fine for now in terms of cash. Let's check what the issue is. So the operating revenue is only 11 million. And the expenses are also very high. The commercial building is almost reaching profitability, so this is not the issue. The farm is, and there are R&D centers, yeah, they are using a lot of money. I think there's one R&D center we really don't need. I don't know if they really need to produce headache pills now, the research, do research on headache pills. Let's see how they manage this situation by themselves. If we need to transfer more money to them in the second round very soon, then let's see whether we will interfere with their firms. Okay, we were just setting up motorcycle, selling motorcycles. This worked for Vaso. Now let's move into the second, in the market with the highest market share, highest market size, sorry. This is Cairo, actually. We'll go to Cairo. Also here, all floors, we, will, we are selling cars. What we see here is that still demand is much higher supply, so we will, in our retail store also, new retail store also start selling cars. Let's find a good location. Let's 
27, 18, 12, 24, 21. I'm not so attractive at the moment. First of all, the mo motorcycle. That is, we benefit from the good brand rating already and maybe lower a little bit the price to gain more market share in short time against our competitor. And also we will now set up a store to sell cars. Demand increases now. We are selling the first motorcycles. Okay, fine. Okay, let's return back to our factories here. It seems that we can add another factory for producing cars. mitigate any bottlenecks. Now as we set up also, we also go to Copenhagen and sell motorcycles there. Let's first check the situation with cars. Can also add another floor selling cars, 24, 30. 33. Okay. Ah, very high overall rating due to the high brand rating you can definitely ask for more money and we'll also sell cars here Okay, we did in Cairo already and also, yeah, it's happening and Brussels, I think we are still missing the opportunity. store for motorcycles also our competitor is already here you can ask for a higher price definitely since our brand rating is already high enough yeah, this works and ah 
before we add another floor for selling cars, let's check whether we have enough, we have enough capacity. It seems that already with this warehouse. It seems to work. Let's check. Let's try it. And link to this warehouse to sell cars. Congratulations to Maple5, finished R&D on a video camera. We're not interested in this. Okay, now also selling motorcycles. As we have now a second product of the same product class in production, we need to also monitor our supply chain, whether this is working for casts. Seems to be fine for now. Storage is full, storage is increasing. For wheel and tire. We would add another third of production capacity. Okay, silly race, okay. It's fine. We have enough money for now, here it is. And let's also check for steel. Oh, it's fine. Let's check for engine. Engine seems to be, yeah, let's build another one. We don't want to have a bottleneck by simply not having enough engines. This will hurt us very badly. And we should not forget. Ah, okay. What did our management team do? They closed down our farm producing rubber. Instead, again, connected to seaports. This is how they wanted to drive down um, costs. Okay, we will leave them. Our subsidiaries, they did not what we wanted to do, but never mind if they are now surviving. And hopefully this will be fine. Rubber is not one of our key input products for us, so we are not concerned so much. And actually it seems like they are now doing better. Okay, if this is how it helps them, then we will accept this. Yeah, so soon we see here now in all of the cities that as motorcycles are being asked for, then we can sell to the customers. So in this case, we will add another door. To sell motorcycles and have more units, more capacity for selling actually them. We will also add this. Let's also check the other cities. So to fully leverage on our Cairo it seems to be fine. Fully leverage on our stores.
Yeah, Warsaw seems to be fine. Brussels? Brussels, also fine. Copenhagen. Oh yeah, we expanded. Cairo was fine. Yeah, okay. Let's continue in simulation. And we see, of course, after extending our production with new facilities, which adds additional operational expenses, running costs, so to say. Um, of course, our profits first need to recover from this. Um, we need to, of course, increase prices a little bit to compensate for it. However, at the same time, we are also able to produce more. So also not only the price, but also quantity is increased. This works. Yeah, for motorcycles. We should add another firm now to produce motorcycles because the demand is already higher than the product can supply. Yeah, this seems to help. That's to avoid to have really a bottleneck here. Let's set up another one. Again, our subsidiary is having cash issues. Again, we need to help. So we are earning a lot of money now in our parent company. And this is a typical situation that sometimes happens actually with contractors and suppliers to parent companies, to the OEMs, to those who are actually producing the end product and selling them. Sometimes the prices which are allowed for the suppliers are so low that they can hardly survive. And all of the margin and profitability resides within the um, parent company. And this is what exactly seems to be happening here. So our supplier is not being able to set up the, its own business model besides what we have as supplier. And um, we are not allowing enough um, profits. So what can we do? We can increase, of course, the price for steel. This is what they are mainly providing to us so that they earn more with it. And at the same time, of course, again, from our earned money, already in this year, more than 180 8 million um, transfer some of this money with issuing new shares. This is what we will exactly do now. The stock price is really low. Premium of 30%. This is too much. Yeah, 20% should be enough. Otherwise, it will be really a bad deal. And now issue the shares. Let's quickly check what how it looks like in the income statement. So the commercial building, which actually we didn't want to have from the beginning, but we could not stop the AI to do it. It's now being profitable. This is fine. Retail stores somehow not working. R and D centers are taking up a lot of money. The power they closed already. And for the warehouse, which are providing in the end deal to us, they have already a lot of, they are already earning. So what about this? Yeah, they are simply not managing well this retail store in Warsaw. And they should not have set it up in the smallest city. However, this was their decision. We will now allow them to increase the price for steel. Quality also improved, so therefore, I think it's justified, yeah, that we increase the price. Significantly. 
Yeah, this was too much, I think. Let's head it to one euro. Let's see. You are one dollar. Motorcycles. We haven't linked the new factory. Okay, now this is working. So it seems like in Warsaw we have already a good balance. There's still some room for cars already, market share already completely taken over. Also in Brussels seems to be fine, still some room for selling more. We are in good state. In Copenhagen, we also for cars and for motorcycles, we have a lot of the overall market share, potential market share. This is also the case for Cairo. Here definitely we can sell more motorcycles. Like this and and well, so we already checked so all in all now we have a rather stable situation with our automobile corporation we have a supplier struggling as we see many suppliers in the automobile industry actually struggling all over the time and we have an automobile corporation in oem working fine 